Greetings, I'm Pastor Phil, and we're here at St. Paul's United Church of Christ in Wassa, and we are sharing stories about Easter. Easter's now over, so this probably will be the last of the stories that we share, and then we'll move on to other stories. But the story today is called On That Easter Morning, and it's illustrated by Allison Jay. So let's see what the Easter story might be all about. Jesus was a wonderful storyteller. He welcomed everybody. We believe he can work miracles. He is someone who's changed our world, said Jesus' followers. He speaks of God's love for all of us and a God's forgiveness. Here's a picture of Jesus speaking to a group of people on the lake shore. Now remember Palm Sunday, and remember on Palm Sunday, Jesus comes into the city all waving palm branches. Everybody is welcoming him. It was time for the great Jewish festival of Passover. Jesus and the disciples made the journey Jesus asked two of them to go and get a donkey for them to ride into Jerusalem. Other travelers noticed him. It's Jesus, they said. He's riding to the city of King David. Riding, not walking. Perhaps that's a sign that Jesus is God's new king. So some took off their cloaks and they threw them in the ground. Others cut off branches, palm branches, and they waved them high in the air. And as Jesus rode up the city gate, there was a joyful uproar. People were shouting, God bless the king who comes in the name of the Lord. In the temple courtyard, though, everybody was busy with preparations for the Passover festival. Pilgrims had been buying special coins to make offerings, and there were animals for people to buy as sacrifices. There was shouting, there was arguing, and Jesus watched and suddenly grew angry. He walked over to a stall piled high with coins and tipped it over. Get out of here, he shouted. Buying and selling and cheating has nothing to do with worshiping God. The temple is meant for the house of prayer, but you've made it into a den of thieves. This made some of the others mad. Jesus continued to teach the crowds. He told them about the right ways to live as Jesus' friends. Meanwhile, his enemies were putting up their plans. These religious leaders and priests were delighted when one of Jesus' disciples, Judas, came to visit. We will pay if you help us find Jesus when the crowds aren't with him, they said, and a secret deal was made. Look at the big table. This is the Lord's Supper. The disciples were busy preparing the Passover celebration. When everything was made, Jesus and the disciples gathered in an upstairs room for a special meal. And while they were eating, Jesus took bread and broke the bread and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. And after supper, Jesus took the cup and said, This cup is the covenant of my blood shed for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. The disciples looked at each other and wondered what all this could mean. That night, Jesus and the disciples went to a shady olive grove. The disciples fell asleep, but Jesus spent the long hours praying to God. Father, he said, if it is possible, take this suffering away from me. Yet it is not what I want, but what you must be done. Jesus went back to the disciples, and as he did, Judas Iscariot appeared in the shadows with a band of armed men. Judas greeted Jesus with a kiss, but it was a sign for the soldiers 
so then you would know who to arrest. The other disciples were afraid and they ran away, but Peter followed at a distance. As the door slammed on Jesus, Peter stood outside the courtyard. I know you, said a servant girl. You're one of Jesus' followers. No, I'm not, responded Peter. I seen you with him, said the man, peeking at Peter's face. I don't know him, Peter insisted. As dawn approached, Peter found himself talking with the servants. I can tell that you're with this man from Galilee, one said. You're one of Jesus' disciples. I don't know what you are talking about, hissed Peter as the rooster crowed to announce the dawn. At that moment, Jesus was pushed out to the door. He turned and looked at Peter sadly, for he would know that Peter would deny him. The religious leaders and the chief priests took Jesus to stand in trial before the Roman governor Pontius Pilate. This man, Jesus, claims to be our king, they told Pilate. That makes him a dangerous rebel. Pilate did not believe for a moment that Jesus was a threat. But the crowds outside were demanding Jesus' life. They had been stirred up and bribed by Jesus' enemies. So Pilate agreed to the crucifixion, saying, I am not responsible for the death of this man. This is your doings. And Pilate's soldiers dressed Jesus in a purple robe and made a crown of branches for his head. What a fine king you are, they mocked. Then, forcing a wooden cross onto his shoulders, they led him outside of the city gates to a hillside. The crowds laughed at Jesus as they followed. They stopped at the hillside called Golgotha, the place of the skull. The soldiers nailed, to the wooden, nailed Jesus to the wooden cross alongside of two criminals that they placed there over the head, a sign that said, the King of the Jews. And then they played a game to see who would get his purple robe. Jesus did not struggle. He said a prayer, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Nearby, his mother and a few other women wept. Although it was day, the sky drew dark as night for three hours. Then, with a cry, Jesus died. Jesus was laid in a tomb cut out of solid rock. His friends wept as the stone was rolled into place. The next day was the Sabbath day. It was a day of rest. Very early on the day following the Sabbath, the women who had been following Jesus came back. To their surprise, they found the grave was empty. As they looked inside, the, the grave where Jesus was, was completely empty. There at Jesus' feet were some linen cloths, and there was an angel who said, Do not be afraid. I know who you're looking for. You're looking for Jesus, who is crucified, but he is not here. He is risen. And the women were amazed and went off to tell the story to the disciples. Well, that ends our Easter Sunday story time about Easter Sunday. And of course, the fact that the grave was empty. So on that Easter Sunday morning, just as the title refers, there are lots of things to celebrate. And that includes the fact that that grave was empty, which guarantees for each of us the opportunity for new life after death too. That's my story today. I hope you enjoyed the Lenten and the Easter series of stories we read. God bless. Take care. See you later. Bye for now.